just as a brief overview of my research, the aim of my research is to create a matrix of engagement techniques which help to embed community engagement into the commercial process. Um, I'm utilising Scotland as a case study for my research because it's quite unique in a few different senses. Um, so we have a unique legislative background which is different than uh, the planning framework here in England. Um, we also have numerous strategies in place some of which are on the board here, which are really encouraging participation in um, archaeology at the moment. There's a lot of third sector organisations that are doing fantastic work, um, as well as public bodies who support them. And then we also have over 100 societies operating in Scotland, as well as community groups who are all doing a lot of different um, community engagement programmes at the moment. Um, so I thought for the theme of today's um, session, I'm looking more at the past to inform how we can um, make future practices. Um, so when I first started off my research, I just wanted to find one statistic uh, looking at how much um, community engagement commercial companies were involved in. And I quickly realized the statistic did not exist. So I went about trying to create it for myself. So I started to data mine discovery and excavations in Scotland publications. And I've data mined them all the way back to the year 2000 now. Um, and I was looking for keywords such as community, public, involvement. Um, so I've now made a database of um, all the projects, which there's now over 600 of them. So I've kind of taken a macro to micro approach with my research. So I'm looking at broad trends across Scotland, community engagement, community archaeology as a whole. And then I'm narrowing it down bit by bit to professionals, to commercial and then to development led. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today, I should say, is just a snapshot of some of the trends that I've seen. Happy to discuss them further if anyone wants to know. Um, but also I've had to, some of the nuances in these categories are missed just for, for the sake of time today. But yeah, I'm happy to discuss them further. So when I've been looking at my data, um, it's highlighted a lack of archival data on community engagement and practices. Um, outside those published case studies, a lot of the... Um, Practices are hidden in grey literature or just not mentioned at all. Um, so I'm making my data accessible now. Um, I'm creating it. I've got funding to create an accessible database, which should be going up hopefully early next year, um, which will have an interactive map where you can click on all the different pins um, and we'll have a keyword re uh, search as well. And I think that this should hopefully become a really valuable resource for the sector that provides that empirical data that researchers and practitioners can then use um, and this can also these metrics can then aid discussions for government funding and backing for community outreach as well so to to look at some of my data um, start off i've got i've looked at the locations of where all the activities are happening so i've got them sorted according to their local authority area here on the map and then the bar chart breaks it down further and just to look at one of the examples, um, the Highlands has the highest number of activities, which is quite interesting because it's, um, it's got the largest land area in Scotland, but it's also got the lowest population density. Um, so I'm wondering whether a lot of these activities are due to a lot of the undeveloped ground. So this encourages more like survey, field walking practices across there. Um, there's also lots of different uh, organisations and initiatives for the Highlands specifically, such as archaeology for communities in the Highlands. Um, so I'm going to start looking at each of these groups and the areas further to look at different clusters that are coming up and seeing if there's a reason for um, more practices in certain areas or if they change over time as well. When you start to look at the type of activity happening, I've got this bar chart which shows the spread of activities, I've kind of grouped them into for today. Um, and this highlights, again, the broad scope of community engagement or archaeology practices as well. Um, you can see the most common activity is excavation. And this is then followed by uh, survey projects um, and activities. And one of the ones I found interesting was field walking and reporting actually were two of my lower ones. And I expected them to be quite high, um, but I think that so I thought they would be higher because they don't require that specialist equipment. But I'm wondering if that's due to the different reporting um, associated with these activities. So that's the kind of limitation I'm aware of in my research. 
um, if we look towards the dates of the projects, you can see different peaks on the graph, and I've started to interrogate those peaks further. Um, so these are just some of the activities that I've, I've managed to link to different peaks, but our highest uh, number of activities, over 100, was in 2017, and that can be linked to the Scottish Government's designated year of history, heritage and archaeology in Scotland. So um, there was a lot of different activities put on for the public, um, as well as the relaunch of Digit 2017 as well. And then, of course, there was Jurassic Fall 2020, which um, uh, due to COVID, um, and we're still seeing projects haven't picked up quite from there due to the restrictions for in-person activities. So if I start to look at the organisers of these projects, I've grouped them here according to public, private, third sector, and then community-led and society-led as well. Um, so you can see that on the bar chart on the right. And then I've further broken those down into the professionals specifically um, on the left here. And of the 659 activities that I've looked at, 516 have had a professional involvement at some stage in them, and 250 Three of these are specifically commercial. So if we start to look at commercial specifically, um, I've kind of I've tried to categorize the types of activities commercial companies are involved in, and I've come up with these four kind of headings for them. Um, so each of these categories are further analyzed in my work, um, and I've looked at some of these case studies that are here. But the most pertinent to my research um, is the development-led sector. So it's only recently in Scotland that the National Planning Framework 4, which came out in February, has explicitly recognised public benefit um, as a, uh, sorry, archaeology as a form of public benefit. Um, my data, as I mentioned, severely lacks a lot of the development-led practices. The companies don't report on the everyday kind of stuff that's going on. Um, so I've got very few projects to actually look at in my research. Um, but when I've been talking to different companies and professionals, a lot of their engagement comes down to publishing in Discovery and Excavation Scotland or by holding the regional conferences or going along to local um, society lecture series. But of my case studies, I've been able to break them down into the following groupings. So I've organised them according to large scale infrastructure projects, brownfield sites, greenfield sites, mineral extraction and wind farm sites. And you can see the breakdown on the board here. And then I further, cat I further categorized um, it according to these themes that are here. And these are all being interrogated further in my research to understand if there's any wider influences going on or what pre-existing stimuli there are for those. So to create my framework, oh, the, there is a picture behind there. That's, that's the young board, sorry. Um, but yeah, to, to look towards the future, I think you've first got to understand the past and where we're at currently. So yeah, I'm taking that micro, uh, macro to the micro view, which I think provides scaffolding to create a framework. Um, so through my research, I've been looking at those national and regional trends, and uh, by uh, placing them on maps, I can start to look at any overlaps between community initiatives and commercial endeavours as well. And this helps to provide a context in which the commercial sector operates. I'm showing awareness of the legislation practices and my matrix will then show awareness of the different settings and contexts in which it works. So going forward, I'm going to start interrogating different techniques for engagement to understand their suitability for, um, for different settings. Again, sorry, the, the, the photo's gone. Um, but yeah, so in my research, I'm using the term multidisciplinary um, because I really believe that to do this, we need to look out with the discipline of archaeology. Um, so a lot of what I've been looking at is very practice led. And it's only recently that we're now starting to look at the kind of structures that are in place, which encourage engagement. So there is some current research going on, which is looking really at value and understanding different audiences and stakeholders. But my research, I'm hoping to look at different fields of um, schools of thought and fields of research. So I'm primarily looking towards education and psychology as well. And I'm interrogating the different motivations for engagement and then the different approaches to it. So I'm hoping that this can then um, contribute to those discussions on value and what constitutes meaningful engagement as well. And this provides a theoretical base from which we can develop these approaches too. 
so just to to conclude um i think my research is clearly situated with a foot in the past and a foot in the future as well because i'm analyzing these past approaches and developing this archival uh, resource as well which can then help us establish a grounding from which we can then lead future practices in towards um, by examining these different schools of thought I am hoping to develop a robust and effective framework which can highlight and encourage new practices. And going forward, by analysing these techniques for suitability in different contexts, I'm hoping that my contribution can be practical, adaptable and enduring. Thank you.